everybody. Happy Friday. I hope you're doing well. Well, today is Friday and we do something very special on Fridays. Why would I have this coat on? Because it's science day. That's right. It's science day. So we're going to do a science experiment. Absolutely. Now, let's have a quick review. What letter have we been working on all week? Mr. M, Mr. M. Now he has something very special. What does he have? He has a munching mouth. Do you remember? He loves to eat things that start with the letter M. So munching mouth and the munching mouth tells us what sound Mr. M makes. Can you make the sound that Mr. M makes? Mmm, very good. So you guys have all remembered all about Mr. M. So I thought it would be fun to do a science experiment today that starts with the letter M. So can anybody tell me what this is? It's a magnet, it's a magnet. Now, can you hear the M sound in magnet? Magnet, you hear it? Pat yourself on the back if you do. Good job. So we're gonna do a little bit about magnets, but first, as scientists, we need to remember what we do. Now, what is the first thing that a scientist does? They ask a question, you remember? They say, what will happen if? And so you'll ask your question, what will happen if? And then you do your next thing, and you think about it, touch your brains. Y'all are all very smart. And so you're thinking about what would happen if? Well, I think, and that's when you form your hypothesis. Remember that big word? Can you say hypothesis? Good job, it's a huge word, we'll have to practice it. So I think, and then, this is the fun part, this is where we get to do our science experiment. We actually test our hypothesis. We test what we thought. We'll see if it's true or not. So once we do that, after we do our experiment, guess what? We know what happens. We know if we were right or if we were wrong, which really doesn't matter because it's all just part of learning, right? And so we will come to a conclusion. And what that means is we have the answer. So we've asked the question, we've thought about it, we did our science experiment, and now we know the answer. And after we know the answer, we do the very last thing, oops, and we record what we saw. That simply means we're gonna write it down so other people can know too so that if they, they read what we've done, then they'll know what it is even without them doing this science experiment. So, are you ready to be a scientist? Raise your hand if you're ready. I'm ready, I've got two hands up, I'm super pumped. So we're gonna be a science, um, we are going to be scientists, but I have to put my book back. We all received a book just like this. So if you wanna get your book out and follow along, you're more than welcome to, or you can just watch me. So this says all about magnets. Now, if you see a capital M, would you pat yourself on the back? Do you see it? There it is right there. Magnets, that's why we know that that's that word because it starts with an M. And there we go, there's a magnet right there. So we're gonna learn all about magnets. Now, magnets come in many shapes and sizes. Look around, do you see a magnet? Do you see a magnet anywhere on this table? We have lots of magnets on this table. I already showed you the super magnet, the huge one, and here's a smaller one. But did you know these are magnets as well? They're too super tiny, but they're magnets as well. And even this right here, these are magnets that we can do science experiments with. Now, each one of you were given one of these, and so you can try out the science experiment yourself because you also have a magnet. So, we know that they come in lots of different sizes and shapes. Now, magnets make objects move. Magnets attract metals such as steel, iron, and nickel. So, it says right up here, put a paper clip close to a magnet. Watch it jump and stick to the magnet. So, if you have your magnet, you can try with me. I have a paper clip right here, and we're going to see if it has a metal in it. You see it moving? Did you see it jump? That was super fun. So that means that this either has steel, iron, or nickel in it, right? So we know that it's attracted to it, just like that. So that's super fun. That's how you can test whether something is magnetic or not. Now magnets cannot make all metals move. 
A magnet will not stick to a soda can. All right, so you remember how it's stuck to here. We're gonna try the soda can, and we're gonna see if it sticks to it. It doesn't stick to it at all, does it? It's because this is a type of metal that's not magnetic. This is called aluminum, and it doesn't, magnets don't stick to it. So there you go, that's exactly what it said. Now these rubber bands, do you think that they're gonna stick? Let's see. They didn't stick either, do they? Just like this picture right here. So paper, wood, and plastic objects are not magnetic. So these are plastic rubber bands, or really rubber, and they, that means that they're not magnetic. So we tried it out and we understand. Woo, do you see those magnets jumping? All right, that's what we're gonna talk about next. Now, opposite poles attract and pull together. The north and south pole attract. So if you look here, you'll see an N, it's really sideways, an N and an S and an N and an S. So watch this, I put an N and an S on here and they say that they should stick together because they're opposites. If you've ever heard the saying opposites attract, it's because these two poles, the north and the south, will come together and listen. Did you hear them clip together? They can stick together because they attract each other. And then attract means to pull something close. So let's try this. I haven't tried this. Let's see if it'll jump to you. Did you see that? Let's watch one more time. It attracted. It was it pulled it close together. So that's what attract means. So now we've learned about that. But the same poles repel and push away from each other. So if you try to touch the north poles together, they will jump apart. Repel means to push away. So attract means to come together. Repel means to push away. So now, when we did it before, we had the S and the N, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to try to match them. And let's see what happens if they'll attract, come together, or push apart. What's happening? They will not get near each other. You can't put them together because they will not, they are repelling. So repel means to move apart. It's like trying to jump out of my hands. It does not want to go together. Now, this is a picture that I can't really explain. All I could do is show you because it's invisible. And it says the magnetic field attracts magnetic objects. All around a magnet, is an invisible area called a magnetic field. Can you see a magnetic field? That's really good. Do you see all these little things around it? This is like an invis, this would show you if you could see it, if it wasn't invisible. And it's bringing in all these little bits and pieces that's pulling it closer. But these little bits and pieces have metal in them. So that's how the um, magnetic field will pull it closer to it. Now here's something else that you might not have known. Magnets help people do work. Magnets are, in, are inside of many things like an MRI machine, which is in a hospital, computer, I know you know what that is, and a microwave, and I bet you've seen a microwave. So magnets actually work in appliances and different kinds of equipment that helps people. So it says electromagnetics are used in many electric devices. So when you cook your food or maybe you pop some popcorn in your microwave, you can look at your mom and dad and say, you know what, there are magnets in there and they will be so impressed. And they may not even know. So you are teaching them something else. So there we go on that. And then a compass, does everybody remember what a compass is? It points to the north right here. A compass is a magnet that helps people find their way. The magnets on the board hold up papers Magnets are everywhere. So if you've ever had a, a magnet on your refrigerator, I know that I have magnets on my refrigerator to keep holding pieces of paper together. That's kind of what they're saying right there. So simple magnets are the type we use in our life every day. So we don't use the magnets that are in actually microwaves, but we use the smaller ones like these every day. And they're so helpful. So now let me know a little bit more about magnets. Let's get ready. Is everybody ready? Let's stretch like we always do. We're ready to do our experiment. So everybody was given this piece of paper. 
just like this. Now, I wrote my name in yellow. Hey, why don't you ask your mom or dad if they can write your name in yellow and then you could trace over your name. That way we'll know it's yours. And then I would like you to cut this line out right here, that dotted line. And I'd like you to cut it out and it'll look just like this. Now, on the front of this, it says number one, color. Number two, cut. And number three, paste. So, I would like you to color all of these, whatever color you want to, and then I'd like you to cut each little square out. It may take, take a minute to do it, but that's okay. And then I've gone ahead and done that. So I have them all over here so that we're ready for our science experiment. And what we're going to do is we're gonna decide if it's magnetic, which would mean that it have a metal in it, or it's not magnetic. Now remember, we know it's magnetic if it attracts to it, right? If it pulls it close. So, and once we figure that out, I got a glue pot from school, and so we are gonna glue it wherever it needs to go. So we will say the first one is a paper clip. Now we kinda already can guess, since we already did it before. Do you think a paper clip is magnetic or not magnetic? Well, let's try it and see. So, does it stick to it? It did though, didn't it? That means that it's magnetic. So what we're gonna do is we are going to quickly put a little bit of glue. Does everybody remember the rule about the glue? Just a dot, not a, not a lot. That's right. And we're gonna put it right here in the box that says it's magnetic. Now let's do another one. I'm gonna pick up the one that says spoon. Now, do you see a spoon over here? I have a plastic spoon, a plastic spoon that you might take if you were taking a meal somewhere, you had some applesauce. So, do you think it's magnetic or not? Well, let's look and see. What do you think? No, oh, it's not magnetic because remember plastic is not magnetic. So, do we put it in the top one or the bottom one? We put it in the bottom one, don't we, with the big X because it's not magnetic. All right, now we're gonna do the next one. Let's pick up this one. This is a crayon. So I have a crayon right here, and we're gonna see, do you think it's magnetic or not? Okay, well, here we go. Is it magnetic? No. It's not magnetic. So, top or bottom, which one do we put it under? That's right, we put it under the bottom one because it is not magnetic. All right, let's try, oh, I thought this one would be fun. This is a cup, and guess what? We learned about this cup earlier this week. This is Mr. M's mug. This is Mr. M's mug. So, do you think it is magnetic or not? Let's try. What do you think? You're absolutely right. It is not magnetic. Otherwise, it would have stuck, right? So, we're gonna put that in the one that says no, it's not magnetic. All right, let's do scissors. Scissors. I brought some scissors from school. So, these are the scissors that you have used before. Do you think the part right here is magnetic or not? Let's see what happens. What do you think? I think it's stuck. That means it's magnetic. So let's put it with its right one. There we go. It was magnetic. Now, oh, this is a good one. Feather, feather. We have a feather, what do you think? You scientist, you. All right, here, let's see. It's not magnetic, is it? That means it doesn't have any metal in it. Although I wouldn't really think that there would be metal in it, like a bird or something like that. So, top or bottom? It goes on the bottom. We've done a lot of things that are not magnetic. Okay, let me see here. Let's try a block. We have one that's just like this, a block. Magnetic or not? All right. 
You're right, it's not magnetic because it's made of plastic and plastic doesn't have metal in it. So very good, we're gonna glue that one, top or bottom. Yep, it goes down on the bottom with the rest of these guys down here. Now, let's try the penny. We have a coin. Let's try the penny. It looks like metal. Do you remember that we learned that not all metals like aluminum are not magnetic? So this does not have, this is metal, but it's not magnetic, right? So top or bottom, that's right. It's down here at the bottom. All right, now we have a little nut. This is part of our little game that we play with the screws and the nuts where we put them in. Magnetic or not? Here we go. Did you see it jump? It's stuck right on there. That means it's magnetic. It is attracted to it, right? All right, I'm so glad we get to put one up on the top. What do you think? Here we go. It goes right on the top under the word magnetic. And the last one we have is a key. And this one's tricky. This one surprised me a little bit when I tried it earlier. Do you think it's magnetic or not? It's definitely made of metal. So we'll have to see, even though if it's metal, whether it's magnetic or not. It's not. Oh my goodness. It is not magnetic. So we put it top or bottom. We're kind of running out of space, aren't we? Now that key doesn't have any metal in it. You may find that your key does. So that might change because we don't have the same key, right? So we have learned lots of different things about what is magnetic and what is not. And you know what? You can take your magnet that we have, um, that we sent to you, and you can maybe even go around the house and see if you can find things that are magnetic that are not even on this list. Now, if you finish this up, I would love for you to take a picture of it and post it on our Facebook. I'll put mine up and you can just post yours right underneath it too. But show your face because I miss seeing you so much. So I hope you've enjoyed your science lesson today and um, I have loved doing it. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and we will talk again next week. Bye.